boys and girls, I feel like we are so, so honored to have our city councilman, Mr. Ron Nuremberg. He is your city councilman because you live in District 8, and he represents District 8. So when they call me and ask if he could come and do a kids' town meeting at McDermott Elementary, well, for sure I was elated because I wanted him to know how proud we are of our fifth grade students. So today you're going to be sharing some of your concerns because his job, I guess, so to speak, is to help people in our District 8 community. And I know he has an emphasis on environment, correct? And keeping our city clean, as all the city councilmen do. And I know I saw, read something about you are especially passionate about water safety and that kind of thing. He graduated right here in San Antonio from the University, uh, Trinity University. But he has a higher degree, called a master's, from the University of Pennsylvania. He was just elected in July, so this is your first term, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so he's, he's excited. We're the pilot school, meaning we're the first ones to really get to do this with all of the press that's involved. We are, ex we are very excited about that, right? Yes. Yes, yes. so Mr. Uh, Councilman Nuremberg, Thank you for coming to McDermott today, and I hope you have a great experience because we certainly are looking forward to your message. Thank you very much, Principal Tatum. Uh, you guys have a great principal, don't you? Yes. Well, good morning, Falcons. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. How many of you know what city council is? Raise your hand. No? That's okay. That's what we're here to learn about, right? Well, I appreciate you all being here. I'm your District 8 City Councilman, and for those of you who don't know, City Council uh, works downtown and throughout the city to help do the basic things in our city. Keep it safe, make sure there's police on the street, make sure your streets are paved, things like that. All the things that we sort of take for granted as we go out in the community, we do that at City Council, make, the, make sure there's money available to pay for it all. Um, there are 10 different districts in, in the city of San Antonio. I'm District 8. So we number them from clockwise, and you start in the middle. District 1 is downtown, 2 is on the east side, and we go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is northwest. So there's 10 of us downtown plus the mayor. Anybody know the mayor's name? Julian Castro, you heard of him? He's our mayor. He's the 11th member of city council. And between all of us, we work on many different issues from water to streets, to um, fire departments, all these different things that, that you have concerned about. And I think it's a tremendous privilege to be here in front of you today because how many of you can vote? No. You can? <laughs> Maybe in your student council election? How old do you have to be to vote? 18. 18, that's right. Who here is looking forward to being able to do that? All right, that's good. And what do you think it takes to vote in San Antonio, besides being 18? <laughs> yes, sir. Why don't you stand up and say your name, and then give me your answer. Enrique, what's the answer? Um, I'm thinking responsibility. Responsibility, absolutely right. I wasn't thinking about that, but that's a good, that's a good point. Yes, ma'am. Abby? Abby? To some extent, yes. Don't be in jail. You can't vote when you're in jail. <laughs> Technically. So, there's a, some nuance to that, but yes, sir. My name is Karthik. Um, sense of vote. I'm sorry? The sense of voting. Yeah, so learning about the issues and the candidates that are in the election. Yeah. Well, all these are good answers, but we're missing one ingredient. You have to register to vote, right? You have to, when you turn 18 or when you're 17 and a half and you're getting ready to turn 18, you can fill out the card or by the time you're there, maybe we can do it online, but you've got to register to vote. Anybody know how many people are in San Antonio? A lot. I won't, I won't bore you, but it's about 1.4 million people in the city of San Antonio. And if you go outside of the city, another 
600,000 or so. So there's about 2 million people in this county region. Guess how many registered voters there are? Should there be 2 million? No. Nope. Because not everybody's 18, right, that lives in this area? There's about 900,000 voters. That's right. So I've got a little experiment. How many, how many classes are here? Two classes? Six? Four classes. So how many students are here? You don't know? All right, let's take a wild guess here. All right, everybody quiet. Quiet down. All right, I want to make a little point. In the city of San Antonio City Council elections, we're having a little trouble because people are getting real distracted. They're not wanting to take time to go and go out and vote, even though we give them two weeks to go do it. They're finding other things to do. How many of you are excited about voting again? Good, good. All right, I want all the rows behind the first one. Keep your hands raised, everybody, even the front row. Okay, the, behind the first row, put your hands down. Keep them raised on the front row. Put them down out there. You're not allowed to speak anymore. All right, I want all of you to put your hands down. Oh, you're getting lazy, okay. Keep them up. All right. All right, here down, you put them down. You four stand up, please, and turn around. How would you like it if these three young men and this young lady were from the rest of this period forward, make all the decisions for you in terms of where you're gonna, what you're going to eat for lunch, when we're going to stop the class, when you're going to... You guys would like it, wouldn't you? Yeah? Okay, you can sit down now. We better make sure that you guys are friends with these folks, right? Well, I, I do that. So, really, if you didn't know them, would you like them to do that for you? Make all your decisions for you? Well, I will tell you that every year in San Antonio, we do that. We talked about how many registered voters there are in the area. We talked about the elections and all the things that we have to do. But guess how many people out of 100 take time to go vote in a city election where we elect those 11 people and each of us represent about one point or 140,000 of your neighbors? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. 50 out of 100? That'd be great. We do that almost in a little presidential election. But here locally in the city of San Antonio, where we, where we get to fix your streets, we get to figure out how many police need to be on the street. 10? Getting close. 20. 5? 15. Who said 5? You're right. 5 people. So basically about this many people for all of you who chose to stay home or got lazy or didn't really feel like it was an important thing. So how many of you are excited to vote again? How many of you want these folks to make the decisions for you? Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, you get my point. Voting is a very, very important thing, and that's where it all starts when you're 18. You can go do that. But the point is, even if you're not 18, you live in the city too, right? Yeah. It's very important that, that you have things to say. So I want to thank all of you who took the challenge. Our office sent out a request for you to think about all the things that are um, important to you in our city, all the things that maybe you don't think aren't so good or, or don't think are, are very good, you want to fix, and got some responses ready. And this is the first of many, many of these events that we hope to have throughout the city. We're calling it our Kids Town Hall. And if you uh, have any better ideas about better names and want to create a logo or something, there's another challenge for you. would be happy to have your help. But it's very important. You guys are 25% of our population. Of all the 1.4 million people in the San Antonio area, it's actually more than that. One quarter of them, 25%, are not yet old enough to vote. But guess what happens when these folks stand up, these four folks. You can sit down. But you all of a sudden start to like them, right? And tell them, yeah, we, we like pizza for lunch or whatever. We make sure you have pizza. Well, what happens is when these are, the, these are the only folks that are making the decisions, everybody gravitates towards them and wants to know what they're thinking. They end up calling all the shots. What's important for us to do is start talking to our neighbors because everybody lives here together. 
Even if you're 18 or you're not 18, you've got something important to say about your community, right? You have to walk to school, maybe. You want to make sure your streets are safe. You want to make sure your parks are clean. Well, you have a very important role in that process. And so I want to thank you for being here today to ask questions. And I want to thank you for thinking about your community and your city. You should start talking to your parents about that, letting them know, because they can vote. They can vote for your family, to represent your family and, and about things that are important to them. And having these conversations are very, very important for us as a community to make it better. And I will tell you that we are very lucky in San Antonio because despite 5% uh, of the folks still calling the shots at the voting booth, you have 11 people, men and women, who are very concerned and care a lot about you guys and about how we leave our city for you when you become the leaders. So real quick, before we get started on the, um, on the question and answers, um, I, want, I want to thank a few folks that made this possible, all of the teachers at McDermott. Um, you guys are um, inspirations to myself and my team. I do want to introduce my team. Uh, Karen Vega, who's our newest, um, our newest colleague, she's actually still a student at St. Mary's University. Harjo who just graduated from Trinity University. Coda's somewhere. <laughs> Coda's here as well. Um, and we've got another, another part of the team that's working for you every day and every night. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, you can call us. We want to hear about your concerns and we certainly want you to participate in these things, so thank you again. I also want to thank uh, Stag Restaurants, uh, Ned and Fabiola, if you are here, really appreciate you uh, underwriting this. And now Cast SA, which is, you guys are on TV. All right. This is being streamed all across the city and across the world. So, and we'll be able to have a link for you. We'll send it to your teachers so you can replay this. You can replay the 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 uh, this forum to them, and you can go back and see whatever I answered your question in two months or three months or a year from now if I actually did what I said I was going to do because that's important, very important part of the process too. So. Um, Let's go ahead and get started with question and answer. And who's going to be my first, who's got the first challenge question that they would like to address? And please stand up and, and say your first name and, and what your question is. My name's Helen, and we don't have enough after school recreational facilities available for no charge for latch kids keys to involve in activities. There are a lot of kids, there are a lot of kids needing something to do after school. Thank you for your question. <clears throat> well, first of all, I'll say that I didn't know you guys used the phrase latchkey kids anymore. Because I'm a la I was a latchkey kid. And the latchkey, everybody, everybody know what a latchkey kid is? Nope. Yeah. Okay, if somebody who has to go home, you know, your parents are probably still at work, you gotta turn the key, get yourself in, and figure out something to do for a few hours. Well, that's a great question. Um, we have what's called it in San Antonio the Department of Human Services, and these are things that we aren't part of the you know streets and public safety. These are other things that we do that improve quality of life. And if you know, if you read our city charter, if you really would like to fall asleep fast, you can read our city charter. I'll send you a link to it. Uh, but that's all the rules of the road that we we have to live by. And the mission for San Antonio and for our representative council is to look out for the welfare, the quality of life of our citizens. So not only is it about streets and, and public safety and uh, parks and libraries, it's also about things that help improve our quality of life. So that's what you're talking about. How do we make it enjoyable to live here in San Antonio? Um, we're, we're doing a number of different things. We have programs for after school for, for youth uh, throughout the school districts. We partner with NISD and EISD on some of these. Uh, we also have a thing that um, called Fitness in the Parks. You all look like you're full of energy, so I would recommend that you talk to your parents about the program called Fitness in the Parks. And these are free fitness classes that we conduct in different parks around, around our community. And certainly there are a number of them in District 8. I don't know if there's one within walking distance of McNermott, but um, these are things that you could do um, either on a weekend or, or after school if they're available. And um, I will say that we don't always have the answers, so we're looking to you also for creative ideas. So if you have new ideas for, for new programs, we want to hear them. And I mentioned, who's on social media? Who does Facebook? You guys are probably too young to do Facebook, right? No, I guess not. 
Let me, actually, let me, let me ask you a different question, because I want to know. How many of you have cell phones? That's amazing. I want you to know that I wasn't until 25 that I had my first cell phone. So you consider yourselves lucky. Uh, well, we are on, the reason why I asked that, we are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we have obviously our phones, email addresses, any way that you can get in touch with your city council member, and we all have all of these things, you should take advantage of that. Because we'll take complaints, we'll take suggestions, we'll take ideas, but any way you can communicate with your public officials, you should use that, um, use that method. So, good question, thank you. Who's got the next question? Yes, sir. We have a mic for you. You guys are so well organized and behaved. I, I do want to give you that compliment. Cars often speed on USA Boulevard in front of our school and do not slow down. This makes it unsafe. It is difficult for our school to get a crossing guard from the city. How can the city council help? We can try. <laughs> so you're talking about speeding in front of your school? So, this, which is one of the reasons why we have these school zones is so we keep people slowing, uh, keep people from speeding in front of your school. So I'm, I'm a little dismayed to hear that that's still happening. There's several things that we can do. Um, we have the San Antonio Police Department, which is one of the best police departments in the country, um, incredibly efficient. We work with them all the time in, an, in a program called San Antonio Fear Free Environment. It's called SAFE, S-A-F-F-E. And these are different police officers who respond to issues like this. And we communicate with them daily about different pockets of, of activity that are happening. Um, so we can direct them to, you know, put some resources into school zones that are having trouble. If you're having a lot of speeders, we can let them know that this is a problem area. We rely on that communication, though. So we're not everywhere in the district. Um, my staff, we're, we number seven. Uh, so we, we rely on you to tell us where those issues are, but we can direct uh, the attention of the SAFE officers and SAPD to those particular areas. There are other things that we do within a uh, department called transportation and capital improvements. If you think about the, the beneath your feet, all the things that we do beneath your feet in the city, the roads, the sidewalks, things like that, that's called transportation and capital improvements. That's the department that handles it. But we can do different things on the street itself to help slow people down, like speed bumps, which actually don't really work that well, putting new signs, street speed limit signs. We can adjust the speed limit uh, sometimes with cooperation from our state uh, representatives. But um, you know, the first step would be to have SAPD come out and, and observe that and maybe catch a few speeders, scare people into slowing down. All right, good question. Next question? Out of, out of questions? Yes, ma'am. We're making Karen work. <laughs> there is a lot of congestion on Hebner and Fredericksburg roads in the morning and afternoons. What can be done to make sure students are safe getting to and from school? Uh, <laughs> Hebner and Fredericksburg Road. So this is one of the, the big challenges that we have with building our city. We've got, I'm sure you've seen all across our district, we've got a number of different holes in the ground that we've put there on purpose because we're trying to build better streets. Fredericksburg has a lot of work on it. Um, could you repeat your question again? There is a lot of congestion on Hebner and Fredericksburg roads in the mornings and afternoons. What can be done to make sure students are safe getting to and from school? Yeah, well, we, we need to address um, pedestrian safety throughout our um, community, and we've, we started to do that. Uh, how, do any of your parents work in the medical center? A lot of you, wow. Okay. Well, you've probably heard them talk about how dangerous it is sometimes to walk throughout the medical center, uh, and we've had some very unfortunate accidents happen out there recently. But, again, we rely on, on our citizens like you to let us know where there's particular issues, particular challenges, so we can go and address those uh, pedestrian safety issues. One of the things that we're trying to do, you've all seen, you know, you walk along the sidewalks that are right up against the street on the curb, and you have cars zooming by you. We're trying to move those out away from the road so that there's some space between the roadway 
in the sidewalk so there's, uh, you know, there's less interaction between pedestrians and, and uh, cars. We're also upgrading our traffic signals in some areas. We've gone from uh, radar technology now to better visual, actually the other way around, visual camera technology to radar technology that can better, uh, better uh, determine when a car is at an intersection so we have better pedestrian. You know what a pedestrian is? Somebody's on foot, okay. Uh, walking uh, and on the crosswalks. We have better crosswalks. Some that are audible, you can hear. They're counting down for you. So all these different things are in, in the process of, of making our, our community better and safer to walk around in. I will say again, I didn't mention 311. Everyone knows what 911 is, right? Yes. You, you don't want to call that unless it's an absolute emergency. We also have a non-emergency number that goes to our city people uh, that are working you know, all the time on, on issues like this. You can call 311 from any phone and you can ask questions, all kinds of questions like this and direct us to particular uh, areas of concern. So 311 is another one and, and I'm sure most of you who raised your hand on the cell phone question probably have smartphones of some kind. We also have an app, a mobile app called San Antonio 311 and you can do all of it from your, your smartphone without actually talking to anybody. So, good question, thank you. You guys are making me nervous. Yes, ma'am. My name is Haley, and we are willing to help improve our community, but what can we do? We do not know what we can do as a young citizen to help make improvements. What can we do to help? Well, that, that's, a, that's a profound question. Um, I will say there's nothing you can't do that 95% of your uh, neighbors aren't already doing, too. Um, the only thing that you really can't do that, that other people may be doing, and just these four people, is vote. Um, you can be involved. I think the best thing anyone can do in this city to make it better is to talk with their neighbors about the things that they like, the things that they don't like, so we have better conversations. What ends up happening is that there's always a few issues that, that draw a lot of attention. That's all anyone wants to talk about. Well, 98% of what's going on in the city is, is stuff like what, uh, what your classmate asked about, which is the sidewalks and the streets getting to school. Those are really going to impact you tomorrow. So um, I think being involved in your school, whether it's city council or coming to forums like this, talking to your friends and to your family. I know going, to, going, on, on school, going to school on a school bus, you probably don't want to talk about city politics and streets and police and things like that, but um, you're probably talking about what you saw on TV last night. But I will tell you that these are really cool and fun conversations to have. Um, you know, and they're important conversations to have. If you really want to make a difference in your community, you have to be involved in your community. And, and there are things that you can do right now, just like what you're doing today, uh, to be involved. And on, on a, to ramp that up just a little bit more, we have a program in my office called District 8 Community Academy. Um, we have involved young people from high school to college uh, to as young as eight to be involved in my office to help figure out things that, that, their, that their community, that their colleagues, their, their classmates are interested in. Um, I would love to involve any of you who are interested in volunteering and, you know, how can we... One of the challenges is you, your issues that you care about are not always the same as, as people who are 30 or 40 or 50 years older than you, but we need to be addressing them all. So help, help us by telling us what those issues are, which is a lot of what today is about. Hi, my name is Peyton. Uh, many adults in um, our area complain that they're not finding jobs as well. Mm -hmm. So do you see any new businesses being put in our area that will provide new jobs? Yes, um, and that's a great question too. It, you know, our, uh, our economy is, is built on the availability of jobs often, and, and our entire country has been through a recession. San Antonio has been much better off than most. But we're starting to see more economic development. This is, a, this is an issue of, of focus for everybody on council is bringing new businesses in the area. Um, so yes, that, that is happening. We're working on policies to make it easier for people to do business. 
and in areas of town where we're having challenges keeping businesses open because there's construction or because there's just uh, you know uh, some uh, history of, um, of lack of opportunity we're working on those things as well so we can have jobs available for people but I will tell you that uh, the secret of San Antonio is getting out people want to move here there is going to be another so there's 1.4 million people in this city today in 20 to 30 years when you're in my place there'll be another there'll be double that just about uh, that's hard to imagine but imagine this place having twice as many people in it when you're up here so you know people are moving here we're working on making sure that uh, businesses are attracted here and I will add one more thing which is the most important thing you can do to make sure that you are occupying one of those jobs is to be exactly where you are now. I mean, I'm not going to give you the, the same speech that you've heard a thousand times, but I will tell you that the, the future that you want, with the nice car and the nice house and the job, depends on you staying exactly where you are, doing the best you can in school, and having the conversations that we're having now. On the other side of that, uh, for adults who are having trouble finding jobs, we do have programs, again, through that department that I've been telling you about, Department of Human Services. We have some jobs training uh, programs that we partner with. Uh, we have uh, some education programs. We even have literacy programs for, for adults who are having challenges reading. We have all those as part of the mix of, of services that different partners throughout San Antonio offer to help find those jobs. We'll get to you, I promise. We have seen gang graffiti in our neighborhood as well as our school. What can be done to assist businesses in cleaning up on one graffiti quickly? Hmm. Gang graffiti, graffiti in general, is, is a big nuisance. It's a big problem. Um, everyone, I'm sure, is familiar with graffiti. The challenge of graffiti is that it appears that if you don't take care of it instantly, it gra there's a gravity that sucks in more gra graffiti over time. So our challenge is to clean it up as fast as possible. It also requires reporting it. So I mentioned 311. You could do the app. There's also an actual graffiti application, a graffiti app. So another smartphone app called No Graffiti SA. You can put it on your cell phone. If you find graffiti somewhere, you can snap a picture of it, and the app will tell SAPD and, and I'm sorry, it'll tell code compliance, the folks that come and paint over it. It'll tell you exactly where it is because they take a snapshot of your GPS location. It's really cool. So you take a picture of it, send it on, and we'll get it cleaned up. All else fails, you're not getting a response, you can call us. And you know, you can also tell your, your friends, because I'm sure, um, I'm sure none of you do this, but I'm sure you probably know someone who, who does graffiti, and if you don't know they are doing it, they might actually be doing it without you knowing it. Tell them it's not cool. I mean, it really it takes a lot of money to get rid of that stuff. It brings the property value uh, of your, your home down. And, you know, there's better ways that we can be spending our time on more productive things. Uh, one of our colleagues actually, graffiti of some kinds is art. So he's designated certain areas to go and do graffiti in an artistic way. You know, we don't want to encourage <coughs> graffiti that's, that's um, defacing certain buildings or, or um, other things around town, but if it's art, we have a place for art in San Antonio, we can help with that. Finally. My name is Tarun. Crime seems to be increasing in our community, like breaking into apartments or houses. What can be done to help our policemen better serve and participate in our community? Yeah, well, that's our number one job, is to keep you and your family safe, and we take that very seriously. Uh, chief McManus, who is our police chief in San Antonio, uh, is a great uh, public servant. And in fact, over the course of his tenure since he be he's been in, here in, been here in San Antonio, our crime is way down. We've seen spikes in certain times uh, of different things, uh, some violent crimes, some property crimes. District 8, the problem crime in District 8 is property crime, just like you mentioned, house home break-ins, uh, car break-ins, thefts of, the, of that kind. We are working with poli the police department the same way we are with uh, code compliance and with uh, the safe officers to identify the areas. We've worked with businesses up and down the I-10 corridor to establish a communication group. They had this long before we got there, but we're helping 
uh, spread that communication network farther so when a, when a crime occurs, other people know about it and they can, we can help with catching the criminals better that way. Um, and we're also working with SAPD. Um, Chief McManus and his team have done a great job focusing resources on particular problem areas of crime. Uh, they call them POP units, problem-oriented policing, focusing resources in areas of high need, um, particularly with violent crime but also with property crime. So we're working on identifying the particular areas that are having issues at the moment and then we, we work to address, address that and focus resources in that area. This is a challenge for all of us though and, and fighting and stopping crime is not as simple as placing police resources to, or placing police at the scene. It's about educating our community, it's about lifting up the economy, it's about making sure that people have jobs and have money to send their, um, to, to put food on the table and to send their kids to school, things like that. All the things that we do to make our community a better place, like you talking to your friends, will have an impact on making it safer. So that's what we're trying to do as well. Uh, in the end though, if there's any ever a problem and you're not getting your help, you can call us. These are great questions, guys. Any more questions? Okay, well let's, uh, let's open it up. Do you have any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. Um, I wanted to say some few words because like, you're never too old to make a change and try something new and it's and just do you and try your best to make a change in our community because after all we live in it we live here and don't don't but don't let nobody knock you down and tell you that you can't do it because you can and after all we live here and we have to survive and provide for us so just try your best and uplift our community can i get an amen <laughs> Well said, Jacqueline. Very well said. Yes, sir. My name is my name is Tavion, and there's a lot of people smoking and doing bad stuff, and I was wondering how we could help stop that. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. There's a there's a lot of that happening. It's um, you know educating people about what's good for their health and what's good for their community. Uh, with regard to smoking, San Antonio in 2010, actually back in 2004, passed a smoking ban, a partial smoking ban to um, keep smoking away from particular establishments. Um, in 2010, they updated it again to restrict it even further. So we have a smoking ban in place that essentially bans smoking for all, from all indoor places and all outdoor public places. Uh, it took effect two years ago. Um, if you see somebody smoking in front of their house or something like that, it's a question of individual choice. We have, we're confronted with those choices every day. Do I do something that's good for me or, or bad for me? Because there's, there's a lot of options out there. Uh, but I'm glad that you identified um, that that's, a, that's an important thing. So we do have a, a, a rule, a, a law in place with regard to smoking, but there are many other things that will rely on educating people about what those good choices are. Okay, who, I think you were next. Yes, ma'am. It's coming. Some apartments don't pick up after themselves, like the trash in the dumpster. Yeah, we're getting a, a uh, we're getting a 101 on 311. A lot of these issues are solved by contacting us either through my office or calling 311 or code compliance directly. Uh, but we do have ordinances regarding littering. And so we can follow up with that and, and make sure that they're picking up after themselves. A lot of times, though, uh, I know we're talking, you may be familiar with these plastic bag, uh, plastic bag ordinances that were plastic bag policies and eliminating littering from plastic bags. Love to know what your thoughts are on that. But a lot of the trash flies off to another place. So we're, we have trouble um, picking it all up. My office, we do have, through that community, Academy, we do organize volunteer groups to go out and clean up particular prop problem areas. We do that with graffiti and with littering. And so if anyone wants to spend a Saturday afternoon or um, wants something else to do besides play video games, we'd love to have you. Um, 
In the street, my name is Karthik, and in the streets, they're stealing wallets and electronic devices. And what can we do to help and stop stealing electronic devices or wallets? In, str in the streets, like where? Yes, like Fredericksburg. And do you Just know when you're walking down the sidewalk, people yes. are taking stuff? Yes. Um, other kids or adults? No, like, they're like adults, and they just go like, hey, give me the money. And really? all this. Yes. So what you're describing is an actual robbery, uh, which, yes. which is a major crime. Uh, if that happens to you, you need to call 911. Um, you guys are, are still very young. Um, you're obviously very articulate, and um, there's not many, many people smarter than these fifth graders, I can tell you. Uh, but you should walk with people, obviously, when you're going to and from school. You do not walk alone. You, if you have cell phones, those cell phones I'm sure your parents gave you because they want to know where you are. So if you're walking in between your house and school, you need to let them know that you are. Um, but if you're a victim of a crime, like robbery, theft, um, if someone threatens you, you need to let the police know, and that's an emergency. So you do dial 911. And then after that's all done and the police report is filed and uh, we want to talk about it from what we can do as a city to stop these things from happening, then you come talk to us. Um, you know, that's, that's very concerning that they would be harassing young people like you. And I'm, I mean, I, I completely understand your frustration about that. But we're on your side. Everybody in the city and everybody in this room are on your side. So we, we don't want that to happen. Yes, sir. I'll let Karen choose who she takes the <laughs> mic to because I'm making her walk around in circles. Hi, my name is Jesse. Um, and there's like gangs and bullies at every school and how can you um, stop them from coming to our school and picking on us? Gangs from outside of the school? Okay. Well, that's, that's, another, that's another police <laughs> issue and I'm sure your, your school, NISD police uh, department is aware of that. Um, we're going to have a meeting. I appreciate you letting us know about this. Um, you're seeing this. You have friends in other schools as well? They complain about the same things? Okay, well, th this is an issue that we'll, we'll start talking about with, with SAIS, I mean with uh, NISD and with SAPD, but that doesn't need to happen. Um, our school security resources only go so far, same with the city, uh, but these are issues of the highest priority if they're, if they're threatening our, our, our kids, you guys, so. Yes, ma'am, oh, well, Karen, you go. <laughs> My name's Ellie, and how can we stop people from just throwing away stuff instead of getting, giving it to people like in need of stuff? Um, okay, let me, let me make sure I know your question. So you're, a lot of people throw away things that are useful. Um, you know, I, I don't know a good answer to that question. Does anyone want to take that? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I won't do that to you. Yeah, do you, do you have a good answer to your classmates' question? Well, you could um, donate it. Instead of donating or throw, is donating okay or throw? How can we stop people just throwing it away? And donate it instead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, donate it is one way. We have several organizations. We have many organizations in town that take donations. So if you see somebody throwing away something that could be used by somebody else, let them know about Goodwill, Salvation Army, um, uh, the Children's Bereavement Center, a lot of different organizations that can take that stuff. Anybody else want to answer that question? And we'll, you know, if worst case scenario, if somebody doesn't know what to do with something, call us. We'll help. Who else wants to answer the question before we go on to another question? My name is Austin, and I saw some people watching bad stuff on YouTube, like scary games and stuff. At school? No, at home, even at their apartments. Really? Well, there's not a whole lot we can do about that. I will tell you that. Um, also, some people keep saying bad words on YouTube because every time when they say that, it's inappropriate. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. We, we will have to contact YouTube about that, though. Um, I wish... Sometimes I wish that city council could do much more for you than we can because this is the, a level of government that works very, very hard for you. Um, I'm, unfortunately, YouTube is not one of the areas that we can. Uh, they do have 
uh, standards and policies though. They have the terms of use. If you see those things and it really concerns you, you can. there's an email address at the bottom there. You can flag material because it's inappropriate. It violates their terms of use. So you can do that, do something about it. I don't know how well that works though. Interesting question, by the way. My name is Jenna. I have two questions. Um, it's about, one of them is about robbery. Lots of people are stealing things that are outside because like the apartments, some of them have like just gates that you could just walk through mm -hmm. and they'll just steal something. Yeah. And then my other question is on some roads where the pedestrians walk, sometimes it'll say walk and for like about two seconds and then it just starts counting down. Oh, the, um, the crosswalks? So let me take that question first. And you'll have to rephrase the first part to a question because I'll just say yes, I agree with you. That is a problem where we can address it. The, uh, so the second part about the crosswalks, that's another area we'll need to let us know about because the timing on those things needs, can often be tweaked when we get feedback. Uh, when it starts counting down though, technically it's still, you can walk in it until the stop appears. But if it's not enough time for pedestrians to get across, that's a, that's a big problem, but it's one that's really easily addressed. So just let us know where those intersections are. And the reason why, um, we're such a great team is that we all write things down, so just let, let me know or, or Karen or Harjot or, or Coda know where, where that particular intersection is and we'll make the phone call started today. I'm Jeremiah and I usually see a lot of people don't have the seat belts um, and keeping and putting kids in the front seat. Oh yeah. Well that's not good. I mean that, uh, everybody's heard click it or ticket? Yeah. yeah, you can get a ticket for not, not wearing your seat belt and you can get a double ticket for being a, for your parents kid for not having you wear a seat belt or being in a car seat. That, that's a big problem. Uh, if you see that happening, remind the person that it's probably worth their 20 seconds to put on a seatbelt as opposed to the several hundred dollars that they'd be paying for a ticket if they got caught. My name is Mia and in some of the apartments around Cinnamon Creek, a lot of people, they see that it says to like throw, pick up after your pets and they don't do it and they just leave like their, the dogs or their pets dropping on the park where kids are trying to play and some kids are stepping on it. Yeah. Nobody likes stepping in it, right? <laughs> we can take that literally or figuratively. So let me, I'll answer that question in just a second, but I did want to go back to the seatbelt issue. We have seen in the last several, the last couple of months, we have seen young people and we've seen adults uh, die from in auto accidents that where death could probably be avoided because they didn't take the 20 seconds to put on the seatbelt. So this is a, you know, I, I mentioned, you know, it's, it hits your, your wallet, but it also can be a devastating thing for a family to have to go through. So remind people about that if, if you see them not wear a seatbelt. It's not worth the time. Most accidents occur in a very small area between your own home and where you're going. It's not far away. So even if you think you're going to a two minutes near the corner store, put your seatbelt on. Um, with the droppings, <laughs> We have a phrase, there's not really an ordinance against doggy droppings, <laughs> as much as we would like them to be. Uh, but we have, we have a mantra in my office, it's called, be a better neighbor. This is something that drives our entire effort as, as District 8 uh, City Council office. What can we do to be a better neighbor? That means, you know, that means pick up after your dog. It means make sure that we're not, um, you know, we're not doing something to the detriment of another district. It means doing, working the best we can for District 8 neighbor, neighbors and for people all over the community and everything that we do. But you can use that mantra too, be a better neighbor. What does that mean? Give me an example of being a better neighbor when you're sitting in math class. Yes, sir. Uh, not disturb them when they're working. Great answer. I bet. Um, where are the teachers clapping their hands on that one? Um, correct. I mean, little things like that. Be a better neighbor. You all have a very important influence in the circle of life that you walk in. And if you think about what can I do to be a better neighbor, um, that will help take care of 
of a lot of things, including doggy droppings. I agree with Jenna and Karthik that um, a lot of robbery takes place, and mainly one of them is like in my apartments. For the past three years, they've been um, saying they're going to fix the gates, but they never have. And for the past seven years, and for this last year, more than seven crimes has been taken in, in our apartment. In your apartment community? Okay. Yeah, you have, so every, everybody knows what government is, right? It's just a group of people who have been chosen to make decisions because the rest of us don't really have time to get that, that involved or we don't want to or whatever reason. Well, apartment communities have the same thing. They have management. They're not voted in. They own the place or they're, they're, uh, they're hired to manage it. But those are the folks that you need to talk to about issues like that. If they're not taking care of their, uh, the things that they're supposed to, because when you move into your apartment community, you have a contract with them. They say they're going to do something, and you're going to give them money for doing that. Part of that's taking care of the gates and you know, making sure they mow the grass. Um, so make sure they live up to their contract. If you have trouble, call us. We'll call him too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adrian. And what can we do to help the local ecosystems when, with the pollution and us building buildings all over the place and destroying their ecosystems, yeah. the animal's ecosystems? You're getting an amen from Jacqueline. Um, that's a great question. That's another great example of why we should ask ourselves, how can we be better neighbors? Um, you know, our, our community is growing. So I told you that we have 1.1 million people moving into the city of San Antonio very soon over the next 20 to 30 years. Obviously, there's going to be, we got to build places for them to stay. We're going to have to build uh, places for them to work, things like that. So there is an element of us having to build in San Antonio. We're going to continue to do that. But we have a lot of different things that we're doing uh, now to help us do that in a balanced way, in a smart way. Um, you know, the Principal Tatum mentioned water. This is one of those areas. Um, you know, when you take a shower, make sure that you turn it off. You're not wasting water, you know. When you, um, you're washing ha your hands or washing the dishes, make sure you don't leave the faucet on. Little things like that that you can do it makes a little difference, not a big difference, but makes a little difference. But if you can imagine that the entire city is still operating with that frame of mind, what can I do? Uh, we, can, we can have a better city. With regard to you know, air and land and all of those things, those are very good questions. And those are questions that we don't yet have the answers to. But I'm very interested in uh, finding the answers to them because you know, when you're, again, when you're standing here, uh, we want to make sure that we haven't made mistakes that we can't undo. Uh, so that's very much on my mind. Thank you for that question. And, and also, make sure you talk about those things with your classmates, because again, we don't have all the answers. One more question? Okay. Sorry, uh, guys. My name is Tesla. Uh, people are... Uh, your name is? Tesla. Tesla? People are hurting other animals, and they don't care about them. Um, I've been seeing a lot of dead animals during the street and they don't stop to um, care about them. And how can we do to help that? Yeah, you're talking about the animals in the streets? that are. So let the record show that the last question that was asked was asked by someone named Tesla. <laughs> um, very nice name. Um, <clears throat> so we have a department in San Antonio called Animal Care Services. Um, they are in charge of dealing with all of these issues about, um, you know, uh, helping us deal with stray animals in a humane way. Some of them we don't w deal with. We don't deal with li li wildlife. The state deals with wildlife. But domestic animals like feral cats and dogs, we do pick them up. And we make sure that they're not contributing to a disease problem or they're not uh, overpopulating. Um, so we get them spayed and neutered and we try to find homes for them. But the Animal Care Services Department is one that, you know, 10 years ago in San Antonio, unfortunately, we had no, we had kennel space, very little kennel space. We had animals being um, put down en masse because we didn't have a really good operation to deal with them. Today in San Antonio, we have doubled down. We have really focused in on taking care of animals, and we've done that because of several mayors 
Mayor Julian Castro, Mayor Hardberger. Um, the, what's that? Uh, these mayors have been strong on animal care, and so we, we have made significant progress. And today, of all of the stray animals that we, uh, that we see and we take care of and um, spay and neuter and get them shots, 83% um, of them um, are released live. So I think it's around that amount. It changes from month to month. But am I allowed to take one more question? No? They're giving me the hook. Well, I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart and from my team how much I appreciate you taking time to visit with us. This is, again, a pilot. We plan to do this many, many more times across our district. And, and uh, again, if you have any questions for me, call me, email, Facebook, Twitter, any way you can get a hold of me. I'm very serious about the fact that you don't have to be 18 in order to make a difference in this community and you don't have to be 18 to get an answer from your city government. I'm not the only one who believes that. Uh, so make, it, make, make that your choice to, to be involved in your community and take advantage of, of uh, the opportunities you have to make our city better. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman uh, Nuremberg. We appreciate you choosing our school. And by the way, did you know you chose the best school? And the best fifth graders, right? <laughs> he, did, he wore a falcon today. We also want to thank your staff for working with us. We appreciate it. And we thank all the media who were able to come out today and join us. I think this was a great activity for fifth graders. We have class meetings in which they discuss concerns about school and class. And this gave them an opportunity to discuss concerns about our community. So again, we thank you.